In 2018, we left all we had ever known behind in Florida to make our way to Alaska in an attempt to drive our truck camper from Alaska to Argentina. We made it to the top of the world and turned south only to confront one challenge after another. But along the way, we fell in love with the road and realized that our call to wander would need an RV with a little more space. So we sold our truck camper and purchased a 22-year-old Class C motorhome that needed just a little bit of TLC. This is the story of how we spent six months remodeling our new home on the road. Hey, it's Chris here again, and it is another one of my days. So if you're just joining along, uh, Lindsay and I have been tag teaming all the different projects and I got to do the composting toilet. That was pretty much all me. And uh, this is another me project, which is to be working with the battery power system in our RV. Um, call it our DC power. I'm gonna be doing everything from the solar to the battery to the inverters, all the connections in between. In this video, I'm gonna really show you what we're doing, why we're doing it, how we're doing it, and then of course I'm gonna screw some things up and make you laugh maybe. So just to fill you in, I built this beautiful sofa, you may recall from episode number whatever, and in building that sofa, we custom designed it around our furnace that was in the already in there, we weren't taking the furnace out, and we designed it around where we were gonna store our batteries. Outside our RV, we had a compartment for two batteries. Uh, it was just a welded uh, little tray, and those batteries, I've already seen them. Well, there's one battery down there and I've seen it bounce around. So we wanted to bring our batteries inside with AGM batteries. So there are no maintenance, not flooded lead acid, which is what the previous owner had. So we wanted to bring the batteries inside and put them underneath this sofa. And then from there, we looked at our inverter and said, hey, that's a good place for the inverter too. And then we said, well, that'd be a great place for the solar charger, solar charger as well. Uh, sorry, the solar charge controller as well. And so what we decided to do was build this space out with the furnace on one side under the couch and all of our electrical components for our DC electrical system over here on the right side of the couch. I wanna talk about the components of our power system. Now, when I say power system, I'm not talking about the overall RV power system, which would go through our uh, electrical power distribution center. That's where you're gonna have all your breakers for your 110. It's where the shore power is gonna tie in. It's ultimately where all of our DC power goes and ties in, and then the different fuses and the breakers that sends power off into different directions for the lights and the fans and all the different DC appliances that we've got throughout the RV. I'm not touching the power distribution center. The only thing I'm touching with the power distribution center is gonna be one, one um, wire that's gonna run from everything that I'm doing over here all the way over to that power distribution center. It's actually gonna to run to a battery on off switch, which will then run into the power distribution center. So the brilliance of the design that we've set up is simplification. It's not gonna seem simple at first when I show you the diagram, but I promise simplicity is super important. Safety is number one. So we make sure that everything we're doing is safe when it comes to power. We're not gonna burn this thing down, especially when we're inside of it. And simplicity is next. We want everything tucked away, nice and neat. We don't wanna have a bird's nest of wires going everywhere. We want things to be nice and streamlined and simple and neat. Uh, after it is being safe. Everything's gonna tuck away nice and neat and there's only gonna be one wire that leads from uh, the battery area. It's actually gonna lead from our positive bus bar we're gonna put in all the way over to the battery to switch and then from the battery switch it goes into the power distribution center. So if you're looking for fancy stuff about starting from scratch, this isn't entirely from scratch. You're picking it up where we're basically installing new batteries, new inverter, actually putting an inverter in uh, and simplifying the whole power process. We're also gonna do solar on the back end of this. So I'm gonna have it wired up for solar, but we're not gonna put our panels on until uh, a little bit later. Everything that has to do with energy coming in, even from the, the generator, from the alternator with the, the RV running, all that power is gonna come into this one place where we're then gonna transfer, transfer it into the power distribution center. That being said, I wanna talk through some of the components that we have that you're gonna to wanna to consider. Starting first, of course, with our batteries. So currently there's one flooded lead acid battery that the previous owner had bought just so everything ran. We understand you buy the cheapest thing when you're trying to sell it. So we were gonna replace the batteries anyway, or the battery, and build a bigger battery bank. 
So what we did was we decided we're going to go with AGM. We always get asked why not go lithium and the easy obvious answer for that is lithium is a whole lot more money. Um, yeah, you can burn them all the way down to basically nothing and they recharge many more times than AGM, but for the next three, four, five years, these AGM batteries are going to do spectacular for us. Each battery has 140 amp hours in it and we're going to tie three of these batteries together. A little disclaimer about our battery setup is that we love Renogy. We've been with Renogy from the beginning with our truck camper, which was early in the game for RVs and Renogy. So we can offer you a discount if you shop at Renogy. It's usually applied onto um, the other sales that are going on. So information is definitely in the description for Renogy. All the products you'll see, except for the batteries, we're actually we're using Renogy because we are Renogy fanatics. We're not using Renogy batteries this time because we had somebody approach us and said, hey, why don't you try these batteries? They were backup batteries for, I believe it was a hospital. Um, and they just sat there basically um, on a charger and they were there for backup at the power ever went out, everything switched over and would run off of this huge, massive battery bank. So anyway, we're giving those a shot. If it doesn't work out, you know where we're going. We're going right back to Renogy. We'll get the AGM batteries. But for the size of these batteries, it offered more amp hours and we got them for basically nothing. So consider this kind of a test. We could get out in the middle of nowhere and our batteries fail us and then we have to start from scratch. So we have three of these batteries that are 140 amp hours that we're going to be hooking up in parallel, which is going to give us 420 amp hours of battery capacity. That's great because we've only ever had at most 200 amp hours. When we upgraded our truck camper DC system, we uh, got rid of our flooded lead acid that had about 80 amp hours each and we upgraded to the Renogy 100 amp hour batteries and we had two of them that we could fit. So we had 200 amp hours of awesome AGM battery uh, capacity. Now we're going to more than double that, which is great for us. Bigger RV. We saw the importance of having power and being able to have power constantly for us. We work from the road, as you know, so making sure that we can charge all of our devices from our computers to our cameras, to our batteries, to just running things inside this camper, our fans, our lights, um, everything that we want to run. 420 amp hours is where we're set right now. So the next thing you're going to notice is with the battery bank, we're going to have a 2000 watt Renogy inverter. We had a 600 watt inverter when we started out, not really knowing what we were doing three and a half years ago on our truck camper. We upgraded that to a thousand watt when we just did our electrical overhaul on the truck camper. That was great. And we said, well, if we're going to do this right, we're going to do it starting from the ground up from a battery standpoint with a 420 amp hour batteries. Let's go ahead and throw a 2000 watt inverter on there and that should be more than enough power that we could ever imagine possibly needing. The battery bank, of course, is the limiting factor of an inverter, so it does no good to have a 5,000 watt inverter and have a small battery bank, because as soon as you start pulling all those watts, you're draining your batteries and then it doesn't matter. If you are living in a truck camper, you're probably fine with, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400 amp hour of battery bank. You don't need anything crazy. If you're in a class A and you're running some bigger appliances, obviously you may go with a much larger battery bank. If you're watching this right now, we want to let you know this is our, um, I can't say totally amateur because we have gone through this process for a little while, but it is our basic setup. We're not trying to do anything over the top. We're trying to live very comfortably. And the most important thing for us is more than living comfortably, being able to operate our lives electronically while we're on the road. In other words, we want to run our business on the road. Our inverter is a very important part. In fact, if you do any boondocking, dry camping, I don't know how you can get by without an inverter. Some people say you can. We do have an onboard generator, but for us, it's dumb to one, it uses fuel like crazy. Two, it's loud and obnoxious for anybody around us. Three, it's easier just to go ahead and invest in an inverter, have that where we can plug everything in um, to our inverter when we're boondocking. But I do know I will never boondock without an inverter. They're very affordable, they're easy to install, and there's no reason not to have one. With the inverter, because of its location underneath the sofa, we're going to use the remote capacity of the inverter. So there's a little remote switch, an on-off switch, that we can install anywhere within about 15 feet of the, um, the wire that goes along with it. So we're gonna move that switch somewhere more convenient for us. So when we wanna turn the inverter on and off, the switch is convenient rather than having to lift up the sofa and dig underneath there and press the on off button on the inverter itself. 
Um, links, of course, for all this stuff we're going to put in a post in our description. So if you're curious about our setup, if you don't want to have to keep going back and trying to figure out what I'm saying, if I'm incoherent to you right now, which is very likely, um, the thing you can do is just check out our website and find all the resources that will help you understand and build your own system. Should have put that disclaimer out there that every RV is unique. Not only two that came off the factory floor at the same exact time, um, how you want to use them. Each RV owner is different how you want to use it. So somebody may not want care about boondocking, leave everything the way it is. They may not want solar. Other people want solar. They never want to have to plug in. And so your situation is going to be different from ours. We're showing you ours because it's a very comfortable, very nice, 100% off-grid way of living where we also enjoy being able to plug in from time to time and enjoy the amenities of a campground or mooch docking at a friend's house or whatever. With the transfer switch and the batteries and the inverter, we have another component that we're going to use, which is our battery monitor. These are not necessary totally, but we like to know power in, power out. Power in, power out tells us are solar panels working? Are they as efficient as they should be? Do we need to move things around? Are we having problems with them? Um, because that's our main input when we're on the road, especially boondocking, is the energy that we're gonna get from our solar panels. So having a battery monitor showing power coming in is important so we can see the rate of charge and the state of charge, of course, of our batteries. So you don't wanna kill your batteries. AGM batteries can run down to about 40% of their capacity. Um, so you, in other words, you can use up about 60% uh, on a regular basis and not harm your AGM batteries. Flooded lead acid batteries, you don't wanna go more than 50%. And then the big bad boy lithiums can be run down virtually to nothing and then totally recharged back up. $100 with the discount of energy, even less. Um, and so it was a no brainer for us. That plugs into the negative wire that I'll show you where all the wiring works. Um, and through a shunt, and the shunt allows the uh, power to pass through. It measures what's coming in, what's going out. It flashes it up on a screen so you can see power in, power out as well so as you're using power you can see how much power is going out um, it's it's just it's an amazing simple mostly simple to install concept that we believe is well worth our money and it's probably worth your money as well so those are the main components of our power system um, then we're going to have a couple uh, i don't want to call them fancy but definitely necessary things we're going to have a positive bus bar and a negative bus bar and what a bus bar allows you to do is it has multiple terminals and you're, you can connect all your positives uh, in one place and all your negatives in another place. And then you can run one wire from there to wherever you need to. Instead of having five wires going in five different directions, you've probably seen that before in setups. Maybe your setup looks like that. Call it a bird's nest. It looks like wires are all over the place. So what, what these uh, bus bars are going to allow us to do is to essentially run one wire from the battery and one positive wire and one negative wire from the battery to each bus bar, the positive bus bar and the negative bus bar, and that's it. We won't have any other wires coming off the battery, which makes it super simple when you're looking at the battery. And then from the bus bar, we're gonna tie in everything that needs to have a positive tie in. So there we're gonna have our inverter will be tied to the positive bus bar. We'll also have our solar come down into the bus bar. I'm gonna tie our generator and our RV alternator, um, where that's tied into the RV now, we'll tie that into the bus bar. And then of course the outlet, that one wire I mentioned, will go from the positive bus bar to the battery switch, which will then go right into our power distribution center and power everything DC powered in the RV. The idea of this bus bar is it's gonna make everything simple. So the wire runs are short, they're neat, they're to the point, and there's nothing more than what we need. The last thing that we're going to be talking about are a variety of different breakers that we're going to have. Um, and breakers or fuses, however you want to do your setup, I decided to go with a breaker because it would be as easy as just lifting up the couch and uh, hitting a switch to reset the breaker if we ever overloaded the power, uh, which I don't anticipate us doing. We lived three, three and a half years on the road previously, had never had any overloading of power issues. So we're gonna have several different breakers you're gonna see. One is going to go between the inverter and the, the positive bus bar. Um, these breakers or fuses always go on the positive. Um, and so we're gonna put one there 
and that will be a 200 amp breaker and that's basically just going to protect the inverter and everything connected to the inverter. Uh, we're also going to have one between our solar charge controller and our positive bus bar and that is going to be a 40 amp. We have a 40 amp MPPT solar controller. Again, we'll talk about the solar setup shortly, um, but we'll have a 40 amp breaker for that that goes between the controller and the bus bar, again, to protect the devices in both directions. And then we've got one more breaker that may go down with all this stuff that I'll, I'll talk about when we do the solar, and that's gonna be a 30 amp uh, breaker that's gonna go between the solar and the solar charge controller. So where the panels run in through the roof and where they tie into the charger, we'll have a 30 amp breaker there. So those are the components of our DC power system that I'm gonna be showing you in this video, where everything goes, how it goes, why it goes, and more importantly, the thinking that we had behind why we're doing what we're doing. If you're watching this to learn what we're doing, that's great, but just know the more important reason to watch this video is to see why we're doing things the way we're doing them so that you can look at your space because your battery bank may not, may not fit or you may not be willing to build a couch around your battery bank like we were. You may have battery storage somewhere else. You may have to think about wires running different lengths in different places. And so I'm gonna talk through why we're doing what we're doing and I hope that that helps you out as you see where things are going and how they're, they're being put together. As you may recall, this beautiful couch that was built so that it would pull out like so. It also lifts up. Take a little bungee. So down here, um, I'm going to show you where everything is and show you how we specifically built this space. You can see over here, this is our fan. Underneath here is our battery bank. So these are three AGM batteries. This is a little storage area where this lifts out for now. And I'm going to put our inverter in next to the batteries over here. And then this will slide back over and I'll be able to mount things on here as needed. So taking a look at some of the components of what I talked about. So here are the batteries. This space right here is where the inverter is going to go. I'm going to be able to mount something on top of the inverter. These are wires that are coming in. So this is coming from the generator. It's coming from the vehicle. And this is, if you can see it, this wire right here is a current battery. Wires coming in from the floor because the battery is outside just underneath here. And then this wire right here, this little one, comes over here and then goes from this down and under to the battery switch. That's the space I have to work with. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to fit everything in there like I wanted to. Um, we're gonna be using two AWG gauge wire and that's pretty thick and it's not very malleable in terms of making tight corners and twists. So I don't know if everything's gonna go where I thought it was gonna go. And I'll kind of show you the situation of how it would possibly be set up. Um, Using plywood is great because I'm able to kind of build a section where I can mount things vertically or even horizontally. And so I may need to adjust some of the things that I've built a little bit in order to hopefully fit everything in here with the right space. Of course, safety being the first priority. So everything is not at risk of um, starting a fire, of shorting out or anything like that. Okay, so I've done some tinkering and some thinking and some thinking and tinkering about where to put things that make sense. So usually when I do something, I think it's a good idea and then I do it and then I find out a reason why it was a bad idea. Then I have to redo something all over again. And you've seen that if you watch these episodes, you've seen some of the mistakes that I've made. So I'm trying to minimize the mistakes because this is a big project, I want it done. I want it done right. So rather than make a mistake, I'm trying to do it right, which puts pressure on me because I know I'm gonna make a mistake. There's something I'm not thinking about, but in the meantime, I think I got it all figured out. So I've kind of laid things out and what I'll show you is where things will go. 
Batteries, of course. Mr. Inverter is down here with the positive and the negative in the back. So those are going to tie into our bus bars. Here's the solar controller on this little shelf I built. The 40 amp breaker and the 30 amp breaker. So solar power wires will come into this from the roof. And then we'll go from here, tiny, tiny little run into the controller. From here, they're coming out of the controller going to the battery. So the positive will come in here and then it'll go there, out and over to the bus bar. So my positive bus bar, I think I'm gonna mount over here on this wall and the negative, I'm gonna mount right about there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to mount some of these things in place and that way it's there and then I can go ahead and hook everything up. I'm gonna to have to make my own wires. So I think I mentioned I'm using two AWD, AWG gauge wires between the batteries. I'm gonna hook them up in parallel. So I need to make short seven and a half inch uh, connectors between positive and positive and positive. So I'll build two of those. And then between my negative, negative and negative, I'll build two connections there that are seven and a half inches. Um, and I've got special wire crimpers. I'll show you that in just a moment. That will crimp this heavy gauge wire. Um, that's great because we're going to be drawing a lot of power out of the batteries, potentially. So we wanted to go with the thickest gauge without being overkill. I'm definitely not hooking up the solar, not in a rush for that. But I did want to know where my breakers were going to go. Want to know where the controller was going to go. And I think I'm pretty happy. So once I start putting in the other wires, I may say, yeah, it's taking up way too much space. We're going to need to move the controller to my second spot. And now that I got everything set up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building the wires for the inverter first. That's a more challenging one. The battery is really simple. There's going to be uh, about seven and a half inches between each terminal. Um, but with the inverter, I'm going to have to make one, uh, the positive a little bit longer. And I've got to use two different terminal ends. And then um, because I've got two different size lugs that I'm attaching it to, and then um, I'll build out the battery ones. And what I've got are, uh, so this is two AWG wire, it's thick. Right here, you can't tell how thick it is, but it's pretty thick. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna custom cut each size that I need so that I'm only using this, the right amount of wire. Um, shorter runs of wire is always better anyway. You have less loss. It'd be negligible if I added an extra foot, it's not the end of the world. Um, but again, I'm trying to make this nice and simple and tight. So I'm custom cutting, and then I've got these big wire cutters, which is awesome, because the standard wire cutters are not gonna get through AWG2 wire. Um, I also have these lugs that are gonna go on the end of the wire. They're fat. It would be very near impossible, especially to do a good job with the four AWG. I was able to take some channel locks and squeeze really tight and crimp it myself. Um, but with these, I'm not going to mess around. So I got a cool toy to take care of that. And uh, so that cool toy is right here. It's adjustable. There's different sizes that you can do. Um, for this one, it goes from AWG zero all the way up to AWG 10. Um, so I just stick the terminal in there and then squeeze down and crimp it all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting these and mass producing them. I'll check back in when I've got everything cut and I'll show you how I'm hooking it all together.
quick update it's getting dark outside i did not finish the whole battery setup i changed plans which is how it always works um you know that but what i did was i ended up setting up all of the appliances not appliances call them components um and mounting them had to tweak a couple things i'll show you that in just a second um, but i had to tweak a couple things and then i got most of the wiring set up so that all i have to do is connect things tomorrow i say all i have to do there's still a couple little things i got to play around with this is what we're looking at now i built these wires and they're all nice and secure. They're gonna go on the batteries. I was waiting to hook everything up at once, but these batteries can now be hooked up in parallel. I mounted the positive bus bar and the negative bus bar. Then over here, this is a 200 amp breaker that goes to the inverter, goes with the inverter. So this wire I just tentatively put there just to make sure it fits. It goes down and connects to the back side of the inverter over there. I also, you can see this black cable right there. That, that wire is the ground. It's grounded to the chassis outside. So I'll hook that up to the inverter when it's time. And I made the negative for the inverter right here. That'll plug into the inverter and it'll go over to the negative bus bar. I've also got the positive that will go from the breaker here all the way over to the positive bus bar and that will hook up the inverter through the breaker and we'll be golden there. Then I started to tinker with the MPPT solar controller because I wanted to make sure I got everything fit where it would be nice and neat and snug and I wanted to make sure all the, the uh, cables would work, all the wires would work coming in and out of this very busy but simple-ish setup. So here's what I got, and this is where it took some tweaking. So I'd built this platform, um, this whatever you want to call it. I'd built that with the idea that I would set the controller on top of the inverter, and then I've got these two. So this is where the solar panel, the wires from the solar panel are gonna come in here, the positive will. The negative will plug right into the negative um, receiver for the controller. And then after the controller does its thing, the positive connects to this breaker, which will then connect directly to, uh, where does that go? That goes to over to the positive bus bar. So a short little run there. And then the negative will come out of here, of course, and we'll go to the negative bus. And so I think this is where I need everything to be. So a couple things are gonna to happen tomorrow that I'm not super comfortable with, and that is I'm going to disconnect the battery. I'm gonna do this during the day, hopefully in the morning when it's cool, um, because I'm gonna to have to disconnect the battery, which obviously kills all the power in here. I need to do it during the daylight. I won't have a fan. I may try to run a fan in from the house um, just to keep things cool-ish. And I'm gonna to try to do this battery disconnect and battery reconnect relatively quickly. If I do this right, when I come back in the morning, which will be for you in just a moment, I will get this all set up and hopefully I'll be able to transfer power from the one battery that we have underneath the RV to these three in our battery bank. And I'll be able to flip the switch on the inverter and should hopefully be able to power things up with the inverter. The one thing I won't be able to do is count on solar to replenish the battery. So I'll still play, stay plugged into shore power um, to keep the batteries charged. And then hopefully next week I will jump into getting the solar panels mounted because we're coming down to about six weeks before we plan on being on the road. That date keeps getting backed up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, but uh, it's getting time to where I need to go ahead and put the solar panels on. So at this point, I am going to call it a night. I'm going to go take a shower, get rid of the stink. Hopefully the dogs won't be mad at me for getting rid of the stink because they really like stink. And uh, yeah, I will see you right about now. Now I am back and I have a quick update for you. I gotta go outside where the battery is, very important step. So far I haven't done anything that's required uh, coming in contact with the old battery. So now I'm going to have to disconnect the old battery because I'm gonna be connecting things that are connected to it 
And uh, that's the first rule is you want to make sure that the old battery is disconnected. I'm going to be redundant in my power disconnect. I'm going to unplug short power, which is what we're plugged into. So that'll cut off everything outside of all the 110, everything outside of the DC power. And then I will unplug the battery, connecting the disconnecting the negative terminal first. Remove the negative in your life. I just made this up. I feel pretty smart about this. Remove the negative, add the positive. So when disconnecting a battery, disconnect the negative first and then you can disconnect the positive terminal and then when you're going back do the reverse add the positive before you add the negative so i'm going to disconnect the negative and the positive i'm just going to totally disconnect that battery and uh, set it to the side and then while i'm out there i'm going to um, go ahead and hook up the ground for the new battery which is inside but i'm running that chassis ground wire outside I'll show you where i'm going to hook that up and uh, and then i'll hop back inside Everything will be powered down, which means it's going to be darker in here, and uh, that's okay. I've got a little bit, a couple more hours worth of sunlight. I'm going to go ahead and try to crank this out tonight. Get it all finished for you, for me, to be done with this part of the project, the first half of getting our power system all wired up. So what you can see out of here is that the battery is just hanging in this steel framed cage for um, the battery to be outside. Um, it was built specifically for two batteries. I've got one in here, and I'm going to disconnect the negative and that will shut the whole power system down inside. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the positive too and I'll move this battery out. And then over here, up here is the ground, the chassis ground. You can follow the wire around and see that it's actually connected over here to the negative. So by disconnecting that, I'll cut off power and then I've created this new wire, which goes up, drilled a hole inside on the, the bottom of the RV and pop this wire out, got it all set up and it's going to go on the negative or on the neutral right here. Sorry, it's going to be grounded to the chassis right here. And so I'll go ahead and put the camera down and get that all taken care of right now. Power will be out in the RV starting as soon as I get that negative terminal off the battery. And there it is, the battery's gone. I got the ground reconnected for the new battery bank. Now to hop back inside and wire everything up and try to get it all wired up before it turns dark because the lights are out now.
Covered in sweat. Gray shirt turned black. Because it's hot, did all this obviously without power, so no fan, nothing cooling off in here. And you've probably noticed the lights turned on as soon as I connected that last connection, which means I did everything right so far. So here's the thing, these batteries have not been uh, charged in a while, so they were gonna be low in voltage. I'm gonna go pull out the voltmeter and check out exactly what their voltage is right now. Then I can plug the um, shore power back in and they will start charging through the shore power and everything will be up to spec. Now I did, because I wired through the shunt, I do want to set up the battery monitor um, and I forgot one thing that is disheartening right now. I'm going to have to disconnect the battery real quick um, because I still need to connect the positive. There's a positive lead that goes from the shunt to the positive um, battery terminal. And so I need to do that and I don't want to get shocked even though it's probably okay. Um, but always disconnect the negative. Remember to get rid of the, the negative. Um, so I'm going to do that and set up the shunt or set up the battery monitor and that way we can actually see the state of charge, compare the state of charge the battery monitor has with what the voltmeter reads and uh, then calibrate the battery monitor and rock and roll. Good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started right now. Okay, lights are on, which means everything's plugged back in. I'm not happy about something I'll talk about in just a minute. Some of the things that I did wrong that I'm going to have to tweak and fix. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to check out the voltmeter and see what the charge is. Then I'm going to plug in the battery monitor and see how that goes as well. They should read the same, give or take, whichever one is more accurate in terms of rounding to tenths or hundredths or whatever. So it is on AC, turn it to DC, and now I'm going to put this on a negative, on a positive, and it's reading 12.56, which is low, not dangerously low, but definitely low. These are 12 volt batteries, um, they carry more than 12 volts. They uh, are fully charged at 12.8. So what that means is that this is low, but it's not incredibly low. It definitely needs to be charged. They've been sitting for a couple months, which is great about AGM batteries is that they hold their charge. They have very minimal loss while they're sitting, which is uh, a great reason. Lithium's even better, they lose even less. Um, but these batteries are going to be recharged. They're gonna be happy, get them all topped off. Um, that's according to the voltmeter, the multimeter. I trust that accurately. 100%. So now I'm going to plug in our um, battery monitor and see what it says. It should say right around the same thing. Okay, so what we can see with the battery monitor is 12.5 volts, which was what the multimeter read. So I trust the battery monitor is connected correctly through the shunt. And it also said, you could see that it's uh, 0.82 amps were being drawn out of the batteries. That's because I've got a couple lights on and the other things that would draw power, the LPG alarm that's hardwired into the batteries and so forth. So um, all that's drawing under one amp right now, which is great. And again, this is why the battery monitor is so important to us. We can turn on lights and fans and we can look at the monitor and see how much we're drawing. And if we were drawing, say, 8 amps or 10 amps, that would be a lot, but if we were drawing 10 amps with everything plugged in and we were going to go to bed at night, we could, before we fell asleep, say, okay, we have 300 amp hours worth of power wherever our batteries were topped off, and if we had 10 amps drawing for, let's call it a lazy day, 10 hours of sleep, that's 100 amps that we're going to lose to all the things that are plugged in, so that would mean when we woke up in the morning we'd have 200 amps amp hours left of the 300 that we had when we went to sleep. So we can just do basic math and make sure that we're not drawing too much and also when we're charging back up in the sun, in the sunlight with solar, that we are topping off or getting to a better state of charge with our batteries. That is everything plugged in when it's concerned with our power center 
It has nothing to do with solar yet, except for the fact that the MPPT controller is there, as are the breakers that we're going to have for power in and power out. You know, we're not experts, but we're, we're picking it up. And so if you have learned anything from this, hopefully you have learned that you can do this job. Just take some studying, some thinking, I've got some great diagrams I will share. And of course, great posts that we've got on our website about the process of hooking up your DC power system as it is between the solar panels and the distribution center. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of our story, part of our journey. If you learned something, shout it out in the comments. If you have something positive to say, please shout it out in the comments. Negative stuff can go with the negative part of the battery. We we'll disconnect the negative first by negative by Felicia. So if you have something positive to say, we appreciate it. Send us an email if you have any specific questions that we can help you answer. And be sure to check out our website if you haven't already done so. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it with friends and family who you think could use some information from it, who would enjoy our story and what we're trying to do. Thanks again, and we will see you when we see you. I keep saying that, but you will see us when you see us, which is the next episode. Enjoy.